This is ON17, paper 4, variant 2, question 5. So you have an analog signal from a microphone. The symbol of microphone usually looks like this. Sent to some, I don't know, something to be transmitted in digital form. <clears throat> so you need to somehow convert your analog to digital. So you need an ADC converter. Then you transmit it. Beep, 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 and then where does it go? I don't know. The variation of time of part of the signal on the microphone is shown. So... The original, original signal that you see here, this curvy, curvy graph, is the one that goes into the microphone and into the ADC. And then get transmitted to somewhere else. Looks pretty nice. Microphone output in millivolts. By the way, fun fact, microphone can be different types, right? It could be a induction coil. It could be a capacitor microphone. These are different type of microphone, lah. What else? Oh, you got piezo microphone. I don't know how to draw something like that. So many different possible ways to have a mic. Piezo, a capacitor microphone, also known as a condenser microphone that podcasters and YouTubers use. And then our average dynamic microphones. So many different types. Okay, let's move on. So the microphone output is sampled at a frequency. Ooh, 5 kilohertz. This is our sampling rate by an ADC analog to digital converter. The output of the ADC is a series of 4 bits. So we are sampling at 5 kHz, 4 bit. The smallest bit is 1 millivolt step. So if you look at your graph, we don't have the 1, right? Ah, yeah, you could add la, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up. But know that your step is 1 millivolt. The first sample is taken at a certain time. Use the figure to complete... Use the... Oh, use a graph to complete this figure. Okay, so I guess we gotta do some graph reading. At 0 0.2 milliseconds, what is the microphone output? Is when you take out your pencil. If you haven't tried this past question, pause the video and try read the graph now. Just put it up, grab a piece of paper and do it. And we can go through this together. Mm, don't just stare at me while doing this thing. Lah. So 0 0.2 milliseconds, we'll follow the graph and we check where does it go at 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 goes to about here. Okay, that's about 8 millivolts. So I'm just going to write here 8.0. So that's the, the, the signal of the microphone, microphone output. So right here, 8.0. A, hey, point zero, ah. Everything is 1.0 millivolt. So you point zero also, okay. ADC output. Now the ADC output, where's our chart? If you remember... How the whole block diagram looks like in the previous video, we talked about how the microphone turns a uh, captures an analog signal and the ADC will convert that to a digital form, such as, you know, 100, some binary code, send it along the line to reach some other place. Uh, DAC converter lah, and to a speaker in your car or somewhere else. Okay, so the question is, what is the ADC's output? So the ADC will be outputting this digital signal in ones and zeros. We need to convert to ones and zeros. Okay, so let's do ones and zeros here. And how do we get 8.0? Ah? Okay, first step we check. 8.0 is already rounded to the nearest integer. Okay, how do we convert 8 into a binary digit? You can use your calculator like what Miss Lee showed us in the previous videos. Or you can try something new such as Converting binary digits manually. So 4 bit means there are 4 possible numbers. Let's draw 4 boxes to represent that. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is called a 4 bit. So the first number, um, maximum you can consider that as 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Then 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 2 to the power of 2, 4. 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, all the gigabyte storage lah. 1, 2, 4, 8. And now we need to think of what combination of this will give me 8. So I can think of it. Eh, already got 8 here. Ah. So what I can do is 1, 8. And I don't need any other number. So 1, 8. That's it. So my ADC output in binary will be 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, the only numbers you can fill into the boxes are ones and zeros. If you put a one here, it means you have eight in in the number of ten lah. Okay, so this is binary code. This is binary. 
and down there is their equivalent in our 10 digit system our base 10 system lah. so base 10 the numbers that we are used to okay let's do one more practice to find out the next one at 0 0.8 milliseconds okay let's go and see at 0 0.8 oh no it's at a weird spot 0 0.8 on the graph will give us a value of about 5.8 here 5.8 now that's a problem 5.8 is not an integer so we need to round the 5.8 off so remember uh, this is 5.8 but don't write 5.8 here no we need to round it down to the nearest integer and that will be 5 uh, point zero. So say here, round down to the nearest integer, which is the nearest bit, which is one millivolt. You can only have one millivolt scale, smallest bit. Round down, no? 5.0. Okay. Now we need to convert that to binary. Let's do the same thing again. Let's draw four boxes. Why not? Good practice. I am a bit, I don't know where's my calculator and I'm a bit lazy to open it on my computer. So I'm just going to do it the manual way. Okay, so each of these boxes represents 1, 2, 4, 8. How, what can I add to get 5? 8, definitely no. 4 plus 1 equals to 5? Sounds correct. So 4 plus 1 equals to 5. Everything else I don't need. Ah, so if I put it in this way, binary will be 4 plus 1. Hey, so this is our code. Zero, one, zero, one. That is two marks for doing this part. Just remember to round down to your five millivolts and you should be good. Okay, so B1 for here and B1 for there. Wow, this is pink color. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, never mind. Pink color. Okay, that's this first part. So remember how to round your stuff. Very important. Round down. Down. Round down to nearest integer. The next part of the question will ask us to do oh, graph sketching. After transmission of the A, the digital signal is then converted back into analog signal by a DAC. Now we need to draw the output of the DAC. Wow, okay, so we have this graph converted into ones and zeros. Let's draw a zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I don't know, lah, whatever, converted. And now you want to convert that back into an analog curve. But you're going to lose some information though. It's okay. It's part of life. So now if you look at the graph on top, we are looking more at the final part. We are converting everything back to an analog. Wow, suddenly change color. So it'll be kind of a little bit like a step graph already. Because you have lost some information. Okay, so analog to digital, digital to analog. That's what we're going to do next. Okay, how do we, how do we, how do we do what ah? How do you sample a graph? Let's go back to the original. So you need to know what is your sampling frequency. Sampling frequency means at a certain interval, you want to take data points. So down here, there is given to us a sampling frequency of 5 kilohertz. Um, but how many milliseconds? Every how many milliseconds do we sample? Let's do a quick check. So to check your... How your interval, sampling interval, you need to find f equals to 1 over t, or actually t equals to 1 over f. So 1 over 5 kilo. That will give me a, a interval of about 0 0.2 millisecond. This 0 0.2 tells me that at every 0 0.2 second, I will take a data point. So I will read data every two milliseconds. That's why it's, that's just what it means. Lah. Okay, so we're going to read data every two milliseconds. We already have two points there. Let's start with zero. At zero, that's my point. A, it's going to be zero, lah. zero, 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 nothing. At 0 0.2, I already have eight at my data point here. Uh, 0 0.4, next interval. This will be 10. No need to round, right? 10.0. Okay. Next interval is 6. That is 15. Read from the graph. Lah. Okay, at this point, it's 15. 5.8 here. Oh, have to round down to 5. 
Next one, at 1.0, okay, this is what? 8.2, oh, cannot, must round down, so 8.0 at this point. The last point, I guess we could include it too, what's that one? At 1.2, this is 12 millivolt. Okay, I think we got our, our data point, so take note, the interval here to here is our sampling interval, so that's 2 milliseconds. 2 milliseconds, ah, did I? Oh, 0 0.2, my bad. I was like, 2 milliseconds looks a bit too small. 0 0.2. So every 0 0.2, I take a data point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, I'm supposed to draw it on the other graph, but for clarity, I'm just going to draw it on this graph so you can see how the other graph will look like. So we're going to sample now. And the graph should look something like this. When you have sampled it, you will have, firstly, 0. Here is flat. Okay. Then at 0 0.2, you take another sample. Oh, reading is 8. Okay, 8. Then you draw a horizontal line. Then at 0 0.4, you have another sample that tells you that vo the voltage should be 10. So you draw at 10. Like that. And you can draw a vertical line also to join together. Wow, how to draw? Ah? Freehand, guys. I have improved. Mm. Next, 0 0.6, we have a sample at 15 millivolts. So we're going to draw a horizontal line up there. And join everything together. Oy. Ah! You guys use ruler lah, okay? Next sample at 0 0.8. That will be all the way down here at 5.8 actually. So we're going to draw a horizontal line down here. And looks like that all the way down. Next, 8.2 rounded down to 8.0. So that's that. And I think that's it. I mean the last one you can draw up. Ah. But the graph kind of ends there. Okay, so let's transfer this whole graph onto the new paper. Actually, you should do it on the new paper, but I'm doing it here so we can see the comparison. Okay, so let's let me draw up this output graph. So being able to draw this graph will be four marks actually, which is quite a lot if you can if you can draw it out. So where do the marks come from? Firstly, if they see you got some kind of step graph, ah, step means like like ladder, like I mean stairs. You have steps, they give you a B1 mark. The second one comes if your interval of your steps, so for example, from here to here, and from here to here, these are all your intervals, and it's 0 0.2 millisecond. That is one mark. B1. Next, uh, let's see how many got 1, 2, 3, 4. The other two marks come from your correct values of your output level. So your output level should be at, this one should be 0, this one should be 8, 10, 15, down to, what is this one again? 5, and 8 again. So if all these are correct, that's a B2 mark. I think there's a mark scheme, if you check, they say if you get a few correct, you get one mark. If a few cor if all correct, you get B2. So we'll aim to get everything correct, okay? So we make sure you know how to draw this um, step graph to show the the digital signal that has been connect, converted to analog. You lose a lot of information, right? You see? The original sign graph got so many curvy, curvy. But then once you convert to digital and then back to analog, you kind of lost a lot of those sign shape. Now it's just a square wave kind of thing. Okay, sure. Let's see the last part of this. It is usual in modern telecommunication systems for ADC and DAC to have more than four bits in each sample. Still explain the effect on the transmitted analog signal of such an increase. What does it mean to have more than four bits? Just now we talk about if you have four bits, that means for each data point, you have one, two, three, four. You can have any combination of numbers inside here, like 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, whatever that is. So what does the bits affect? If you've forgotten, the bits affect the, let's call it the, the lines on the vertical axis. Okay, so if you have very low number of bits, your axis only have like maybe 1, 2, 3, 4 lines. Low bits. High bits 
Ooh, you're going to have so much more possible levels, such as, I'll try to draw as many as I can. Almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Okay, there we go. So this is only a few bits. Few bits. Here, many, 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 many bits. So there are many possible levels of system. So before this, all, let's say you say, I, I want to draw a level here, but I cannot. I have to round to the nearest bit. So then I will round down. I'm very sad. Originally, it's supposed to be here. No, it's rounded down. <laughs> but now, if I have many, many, many possible levels, if I want to draw a line there, sure, I can round it to that level. Ah, I like it. So the, the possibility is you have more data. So how do we state and explain the effect to have more than four bits? So maybe this one, I don't know how many bits I didn't go and count, but maybe this one has one, two... Wow, what's happening? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna throw in some numbers. And you can have one, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, zero. Wow, so much information. So more info can be transmitted and preserved as you trans transfer from analog to digital and digital to analog. So we can say this more number of bits affects the step height. What is step height? This is your step height. Then you compare the small one. This is your step height. I cannot even write step height. Smaller step height. Aha. So we can say that smaller step heights. What does that mean for the signal? Means that your input signal Mm. Actually, let's say what the smaller step height means first. Smaller step height means that your smaller changes in signal, smaller changes in signal can be represented. Uh, or you can say the word used in communication is reproduced. Okay, smaller height means smaller changes can be represented. Oh, you don't have to keep rounding off to some other place and distort your signal. So what does that uh, affect? Another way you can mention the effect is the reproduction, a little bit more on this one. So you, in other words, you can say, to elaborate a bit more, that your input signal from the microphone or wherever can be more accurately reproduced. Mm. So smaller step height is the main effect of having more than four bits. Okay, so you look at this diagram down here, just remember that. Uh, that is a B1 mark. The other two can come from either of these sentences. So you talk about the effect. Okay, so what? Smaller step height. Oh, means either smaller changes can be represented or you can say more accurately reproduce. Same idea, just different way of saying it. Okay, so total up, this is a four, five, six, seven, eight mark question. If you know how to run this, this should be pretty okay. All right, so if you haven't checked out the previous videos on how to deal with bits and binary numbers with a calculator, go check that out. Miss Lee shows a nice big calculator to, to show how to calculate if you're not sure how to convert it manually. But that's all for this video. I will see you in the next example.